Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to sell accounts of his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled his debt, and let him go. Oh, if the story only ended there. Fill the line number two. We all, by God's mercy, continue to live. We all, by God's mercy, continue to live. At this point in the story, we have the servant 100% guilt free. He's getting away. A happy ending. Did you know that this is the picture of us when we come to Christ? Each of us sitting here has a sin debt that we cannot pay. At a certain point in your life, you will come to realize, wow, I, I can't pay this back. I have this burden. I have this sin in my life. And I need someone to pay this debt for me because I can't. And that's where God will you find Christ on, Christ on the cross. Paying for your sin. The servant didn't quite get it. In his begging, he promised to pay back all that he owed. Now, I don't know why this is mad Sunday, but did we, did we catch, how much did he say he would pay back? In the text, what does it say? All of it. Everything. Do we know how much everything was? According to my Bible dictionary that I have at home, one talent is $960. 10,000. Did you ever learn that trick? Add all the zeros on? $9.6 million. That's what he thought he could pay back. $9.6 million. Now that's debt. You thought the credit cards were bad. You thought predatory lending was bad. At least with credit cards and predatory lending, they'll take your house. They'll take your, your cell phone. They'll shut off your cable. What kind of lending is this? They take your children and sell them. They take your wife and they take you and sell you. This man had absolutely no way to pay this back. And everybody knew. Well, there's an entire sermon that could be preached on debt. What God thinks of it. What the devil thinks of it. And next time I send out a sermon survey, say, Todd, we want to hear your sermon on debt. But to stay closer to the point today, we need to look at the servant's response or the servant's response and what he did. For a brief moment, the servant understood his situation and he threw himself down on his knees. Now, he could have said, Oh please, don't take my kids. Don't take my wife. Please, Master, I I don't have anything. I'm bankrupt. Please forgive me. He could have said that. But his words betrayed his heart. He said, no, no, just be patient. I'll pay back the 9.6 million. That is exactly how sometimes we come to the cross. We say, man, wait, wait, wait. No, God, I'll, I'll pay it back. I'll be good. And we try to build ourselves up religiously. But thank God the Master looked past his words and saw his pitiful state and forgave him anyway. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He paid the debt because we couldn't. Now, He did not pay this debt to give you guilt trip. Christ didn't do what He did to make you feel bad. 
He did what he did to make you feel gratitude. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't finish the sentence. We all, by God's mercy, continue to live, trade in your guilt for gratitude. Please notice, the master did not say, Ooh, I'll cancel that debt. Gonna put me way behind. 9.6 million, boy. You own it. Can we recognize the absurdity of the equations? 9.6 million. $16. Now, I, I don't want us to miss the application to our own lives in the midst of this absurdity. There's a direct application to our lives, and it's kind of painful. Can we really, knowing how sinful we are, knowing deep down all the things that we've done to offend God, can we really not forgive the brother who did something, the sister who said something, the mother who did something, the church member who said something, the friend who did something. May I suggest that deep down we may carry guilt because we don't really believe that Jesus has forgiven us. And that we need to be in payback mode. Today is the day to choose gratitude over guilt. This morning we need to know Jesus forgives so we can live. So that we have gratitude to give. I want to talk to three different sets of people this morning. It may be you, it may not be you. But I would like to ask those who are sitting here this morning with guilt in their hearts who have never known the freedom in Christ, who have never known what it is to say I'm guilty. I got a sin debt that I can't carry anymore and I need somebody to pay it. Jesus Christ is here today and he's waiting to pay that debt, to cancel it. If that's you this morning and you're carrying that, that debt of guilt from, from mounted up sin that you've had all your life, I want to invite you to accept Christ. To simply say, you know what, I can't pay it. I have no way. Please cancel my debt. 